This is video two of the 2402 lecture screencast thing series. And this covers the lower respiratory system anatomy. Uh, one thing I didn't mention in the first video is I've tried to put these terms, the first terms of each little section here in orange, just to give you kind of a mile marker. Uh, don't think that that's the only term. So I put all this stuff here for a reason. So it's really, you're responsible for it all. It's just that I kind of highlighted certain things just to kind of make it look less boring probably. All right, anyway. Uh, your lower respiratory system, this picks up at your larynx, and it consists of, well, I should say, this is misleading, your lower respiratory system includes part of the conducting zone and all of the respiratory zone. So I shouldn't have inset these, but either way, look at the description. The conducting zone goes from your nares, your nostrils, all the way down to these structures called terminal bronchioles, which we'll get to. So conducting means that the air just moves from one place to the next, and there's no gas exchange. The respiratory zone, which is only deep in your lungs, which includes these three structures, which we'll talk about, uh, is where gas exchange occurs. So the whole upper portion, the, the upper respiratory system, and most of the lower respiratory system is conducting, while only the very deepest portions of the lower respiratory system are in what you call the respiratory zone. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Let's go to the larynx. And again, it's larynx. I know that there are several of you out there right now saying, I thought it was larynx. Well, it's not. Nix would be N-Y-X. This is the inx. So your larynx is your voice box and it acts as an air passageway. I'm using my larynx right now to make these noises. Uh, there's a bunch of cartilages, which I'm not going to have you learn. Um, eight of them are made up of hyaline cartilage, and uh, one of them, the epiglottis, is made of elastic cartilage. So there's a total of nine cartilages. The epiglottis, which is that flappy bit right here, this is an actual dissected thing, is a little like a little lid that'll go and cover your glottis. Now the glottis is just the opening to the uh, to the trachea. So the epiglottis goes above the glottis. So every time you swallow, you don't want food to go down that, uh, down the trachea. You want the food to go diverted behind the trachea into the esophagus. So that's what that epiglottis is there for. The vocal cords are little uh, straps of uh, elastic tissue that when you, when you relax them and make them really loose, you'll produce a very deep noise like this. But if you tighten them up, you'll produce a high pitch noise like this. That's how you change pitch. Next slide, please. All right. So then we move on to your trachea or windpipe. And it's got these very noticeable hyaline cartilage rings around them. Uh, the epithelium on the inside, as you may remember uh, from uh, AMP1, is pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. But in lecture, I'm not going to pick on that. You'll definitely get that in lab. But just suffice it to say that the epithelium is ciliated, so you produce mucus in the trachea and you move that mucus upward. So the mucus from the trachea is being moved up to the throat. The mucus from your nasal cavity is move, being moved back to your throat and they meet kind of at that middle point where you can either swallow it or spit it out. Every time you swallow, you're basically um, swallowing some mucus. And the mucus is there to, to catch, you know, pathogens, things that may be brought in. <clears throat> All right, when you get deeper in there, you get to what's called the bronchial tree. So these first two branches are called bronchi. These are primary bronchi. This is a left and right primary bronchus. Then they go secondary bronchi, and then they go tertiary bronchi, and so on in that order until you get down below one millimeter in diameter. Once those tubes become a millimeter or less, they are called bronchioles. It's kind of an arbitrary cutoff, but there we have it. And as the bronchioles get smaller and smaller and they branch, once they get below 0.5, half a millimeter, they are called terminal bronchioles. And terminal bronchioles lead right to these alveolar sacs that we'll see in the next slide or two. Here's some key notes here. And at the end of the terminal bronchioles, you've reached the end of the conducting zone. And then we move on to the respiratory zone. We're still in the lower respiratory system, but we're in the respiratory zone. And here we have them all piled in at one thing, right? Respiratory bronchioles, alveolar ducts, ducts, and alveolar sacs, and alveoli. 
So think about it like this. So here's respiratory bronchial, and you could say call it a respiratory bronchial because there's some little alveoli blebbing off of here, right? So you can get gas exchange done in this respiratory bronchial. Then you lead to what's called the alveolar duct, which is a tube that runs into this alveolar sac. The alveolar sac is this whole thing. And the uh, analogy is the sac is a bunch of grapes and alveolus is a single grape. So each of these are alveoli, which is plural, right? Alveolus, singular, alveoli, plural. Uh, the respiratory membrane, which is the layer, the very fine layer, it's these, this little circle, half semicircle here, all of these little uh, squiggly lines that you see here on this slide image are the respiratory membrane. And it's mostly the, uh, the simple squamous epithelium layer and maybe a flimsy little basement layer. And this is, it's so thin because you need to get gases across it. They diffuse across that. And we'll see that in the physiology section. Alveolar cells, there's three different types. Type one are your basic simple squamous epithelium. Type two are specialized cells called, that produce a molecule called surfactant. Surfactant, I should have probably put that. There's a lot of things that I would like to, in re retrospect, put in orange, but it would have been all orange. So surfactant is the name of the molecule, and what its job is is to reduce, reduce surface tension. You don't want that those lungs contracting too hard, right? And then lastly, you find macrophages, which we know what they do. The lungs in general, so this is this is all in the lungs, right? I mean, all this stuff, bronchial tree, uh, the terminal bronchioles, all these alveolar sacs, they're all in the lungs, but we haven't looked at the gross anatomy of the lungs, so here's that. Uh, first of all, there's two different circulations which go to it. The one we're probably more familiar with is the pulmonary circulation, which we learned about in the heart and blood vessels, and that's where the blood that is deoxygenated goes out to the lungs to get oxygenated and then go back to the heart. And here's those pulmonary arteries and veins that we're familiar with. Now bronchial circulation is something different. The lungs are made of tissue and tissue needs oxygen. The pulmonary circulation is there to oxygenate blood, but the lungs themselves need oxygenated blood. So there are bronchial arteries which branch off of the aorta, the thoracic aorta, and go out to the lungs to provide them with their own oxygen supply. So part of the systemic circulation, the bronchial part, goes to the lungs. Uh, pulmonary plexus this is a nerve plexus that will um, send impulses to the lungs and uh, control the diameter of the bronchi. The couple of different uh, divisions there are sympathetic, which causes dilation of the bronchi. Think about what that means. Di if I, if the sympathetic division is like high energy, right? So if I'm going to do some exercise, I'm going to want to have the biggest openings, the biggest tubes that lead to my lungs. I want those lungs to be wide open and blowing, right? Parasympathetic division, uh, when you're relaxed. So if you're just chilling out, you don't need those things all maxed out. You just need them to just stay open enough to get enough oxygen. And then, of course, lungs have pleurae, and pleurae are those membranes. And if you remember the, the, the heart, which had a, a fist inside of a balloon sort of uh, illustration, same thing works kind of here, right? Where you've got the lungs pushed into this balloon, and there's a layer around the outside. These little pink things are lungs. There's a layer on the outside called the parietal. I'm sorry, sorry. There's a layer on the outside of the lungs called the visceral pleura. Uh, or visceral serosa. The layer on the inside of the ribs is called the parietal pleura, and there's a space between called the pleural cavity, which is filled with pleural fluid. These numbers over here are going to make sense on hopefully on the next slide, but that's enough for this screencast.